The myth-busting world is my home for poking at the game and conducting tests to figure out what's really going on. I've produced over 120 episodes and in a recent one I realised the series has accumulated a treasure trove of useful information. That episode was 119 all about the crossbow where we learned you can use the crossbow and explosive firework rockets to damage zombie pigmen without them getting angry at you. This is of course really useful to know and the series is full of gems like this. So for this video I with the help of my community have found the very best bits to share with you. I'm going to put the episode number on the screen so you can visit it to get the full rundown but for this one I'm going to blast my way through as many as I can and of course verify that they are all still true in Minecraft 1.14. So let's get started with a useful fact about lava, and useful as in prevent yourself from dying. You see, most players know that water will eliminate fall damage, however, lava can only reduce it, so if you fall from high enough up, you will actually take damage. Let's drop down from up here, and you can see despite going through the lava, we took damage. Of course, if that was water, then we would have taken none at all. An old favourite of mine is the Splash Potion and learning how to get the most of the effect from it. If I stand in front of these two blocks and throw it, we'll see that we don't get the full 8 minutes. This is because it needs to hit the player's hitbox. So if we throw one directly above us, it lands on top of us and then we get the full 8 minutes. And this means the further away from the player's hitbox, the less of the effect you are going to get. Have you ever wondered how the durability of an elytra decreases? Well, I can tell you that it's not the speed that you travel at, it's not the distance that you travelled, it's the amount of time that you spend flying. One second equals one durability off of your elytra. And if you'd like to know how unbreaking affects this, then go and check out episode 97. What is the best way to kill a silverfish, you might wonder? When you attack it, it calls all of its friends from the infested stone blocks in a stronghold. Well, if you use fire, it won't do that. As you see, this silverfish burns without calling any of its friends. And just in case you didn't realise what all these other blocks are, they're infested stone blocks. You can see here the silverfish is now calling its friends. Scaffolding can be used to avoid taking full damage if you hold down shift. But as you can see there, it doesn't always work with one scaffolding. So if you were to use two, you would always avoid taking that full damage. Ah yes, fishing. Everyone's favourite Minecraft pastime. Well, did you know if the bobber has a block above it, then that will reduce the fishing rate by 50%, and I mean anywhere above it. And if that bobber is in a biome where it's raining, then the chance is increased by 25%. So, you know, if it's gloomy outside and it's raining, go fish. Hostile mobs are unable to pathfind over scaffolding. They treat it like it's an air block. As you can see, the creeper isn't going to cross the scaffolding we've got here. The sweeping edge enchantment can be used in junction with the looting effect. This is especially useful for mob farms and the like. Here you can see we've got looting at level 1000 and that is to simply exaggerate the results of this simple test. I am only going to attack the creeper, yet you can see the looting was applied to the skeletons on either side. It is possible to put the mending enchantment on a shield so you can repair it with XP. And thanks to many, many ender pearl throws, we managed to learn the optimal angle at which to throw your pearl to travel the furthest distance when you're on flat land. You need to use the pitch coordinate, which happens to be directly above the crosshairs. You want to throw your ender pearl between minus 35 and minus 42, and you'll travel the furthest on flat land. The dolphin mob added in the update aquatic needs both water and air to survive. Here it has a mixture of both. So from our testing we learned that it can't survive in nothing but water alone and it also can't survive without water in this kind of environment. If you're unaware, attacking a guardian that has its orange fawns extended means you would take damage. There is a way to avoid this though and that is using TNT. So we can see the one there has its fawns extended or this one does now. In fact, all three of those did, and they've all died, and we didn't take any damage from that. Have you ever wondered what the fastest speed you could go with an elytra is? Well, you may have thought that going directly downwards and firing rockets over and over again was a good way to find out. Fun fact for you, this is actually the same speed as falling in Minecraft, so you can't go faster than that. 
Feeding a parrot a cookie will unfortunately immediately kill it. You also see little green particle effects which could suggest that they are poisoned as well. Here's an old trick that still works in Minecraft 1.14. You throw your potion and switch to your looting sword and you can see that the looting effect was applied even though we didn't actually use this. Now you might be thinking you can put the looting sword in your offhand but unfortunately that is not the case. As you can see we didn't get looting on the skeletons. And yes this also works with a bow as well. We switched just in time and we got looting from the arrow hitting the creeper. So I do hope you're enjoying the episode so far. Make sure to hit that like button to support the video. As always, thank you for doing that. And of course, make sure you're subscribed if you're not. There will be more episodes of Myth Busting in the future. But now, let's jump right back into it. The smallest space in this game you can move into is four snow layers with a block on top of it. And you'll need the assistance of a block moved by a piston to put you down into this mode. And as you can see, we can climb into this space. The Depth Strider Enchantment allows you to move faster through water. Unfortunately, this effect doesn't apply to lava. And yes, underneath here, I do have some Depth Strider boots on. The maximum amount of llamas you can have in a caravan led by a lead is 10. We've got 10 in total there. This includes the baby llamas. If I put an 11th in, it is not going to join the llama caravan. And yes, it is possible to have multiple llama caravans come with you at the same time. Turtle eggs are very fragile. Walking on them and jumping up and down can cause them to break. Did you know that items can do this as well? As you can see, throwing the items on the turtle eggs causes them to break. You might think that dispensers can be wasteful with bow mill. As you can see, we've got one in each slot of these dispensers. If we leave this running for a while on full wheat or if there were no wheat there at all, this wouldn't actually waste any of the bow mill. As you can see, all of it is still in place. There is an old myth that still persists to this day. Should you break leaves manually with your fist or just break the logs and let the leaves decay naturally to get more drops? I can tell you that there is no difference. However, if you use a fortune free axe on the leaves, that will actually make a difference to the amount of drops that you get. And while we're on the topic of fortune, we'll take it all the way back to the sixth episode of the series where we mined loads of these ores and learned that the fortune enchantment doesn't affect the amount of experience points that you get from them. If you didn't know, you're now about to learn that you can one hit kill a zombie pigman and the group won't become aggressive. You can do this with a smite five axe and also a smite five sword, but with the sword, you'll need to jump into the air and make sure it's a critical hit. And I'm sure some of you are gonna comment about how we could use strength potions and also sharpness five. Well, those things were taken into consideration in the episode where we first showed this. In this series, we do like to investigate what blocks a beacon beam can go through. It started in episode 40 and we keep it up to date over time. You can see a clay, beacon beam doesn't go through, enchanting table it does. And all the blocks that beacon beams can go through are right here. So if you really need to know all of these, then you can pause the video, study all the blocks, and yeah, these are the ones they go through. Chorus fruit is a course of food that you can eat with a full hunger bar and it will teleport you. However, it won't teleport you into lava. Unfortunately, the same can't be said for fire. Yep, there we go. <laughs> We've all been set on fire by lava at one point or another in this game, but have you ever wondered how long that fire will last for? Well, initial contact with the lava will start 15 seconds of being on fire and then for every other second you're in the fire you will continue to burn for. So if you stand there for a minute in the fire, you're going to burn for an additional minute on top of the 15 seconds. Did you know a skeleton with a crossbow can't attack you? Neither can a pillager with a bow. There is a difference between these two mobs though. The pillager acts peaceful, but the skeleton will actually attack me with melee damage. Have you ever wanted to know which mobs the wither mob will actually attack? You see it goes after this chicken but it doesn't go after this husk. And that's because the wither is an undead mob and it doesn't attack its fellow undeads. This is the list of the other undead mobs in the game. This one is a common myth that I see time and time again. Whenever you're building a mob farm or moving mobs through water, someone always says, why don't you use ice to make them move faster? Well, because it doesn't. <laughs> As you can see here, they all move at the same speed. Now I know 90% of you watching know this one, but I always get a question in a live stream or a video, how am I instant breaking the blocks? Well, we did a whole episode on this covering all of them, but stone is the most common one for clearing out areas underground, and it is achieved by having efficiency five 
and Haste 2, which you can get from a beacon. Have you ever wanted to know which of the firework rockets is the most efficient for flying in terms of how much gunpowder you're using? Well, there are three different types, and of course, each one uses more gunpowder than the last. In the episode, we did the testing, we crunched the numbers, and it turns out the most efficient one to get the most bang for your buck out of your gunpowder is the first one, Flight Duration 1. Did you know that respawning the End Dragon will bring back the Obsidian Pillars? As you can see, I've removed one entirely from the world here. So let's bring the Ender Dragon back into existence. And just like that, the Pillar of Obsidian returns. If you want to travel upwards in this game, you might have thought that the Soul Sand Elevator with water is the fastest method, but here is one that's even faster, the Minecart. Just hold down, right click, and you'll get to the top in no time. Growing crops in rows with spaces between them like this is actually faster than growing them in a big batch, but you might be thinking, well, that's half the amount that you're growing if you're growing them in rows. The way to take advantage of this game mechanic is to alternate the rows of crops. If you have a big farming field, alternate them like this and they will actually grow faster. Over in this part of the myth-busting world, we have a huge setup for testing the efficiency of powered rails when it comes to speed. Now these powered rails are considered the more expensive of the two, and so you may not want to make all the minecart tracks that you travel on out of powered rails alone. So here we have lanes where the amount of regular rails in between increases by one each time. And I've updated this test so that we have creepers riding minecarts, and visually they appear to be above the minecarts, that is some sort of glitch. But anyway, we can now get up above and see the difference in speed visually. There's literally seconds in it, all the way down to the very end here. You know, basically what you can take away from this test is spatial powered rails out. You're not going to lose a crazy amount of speed. The strength effect can be used for increasing your attack damage on a mob. Unfortunately, this doesn't apply to projectiles. You can see here that we have 10 seconds of a very high level of strength. So I'm going to apply that, shoot this creeper, and you can see it doesn't work with a projectile. If I give it a whack with a melee attack, then the strength is applied. If you've ever watched this series for more than a minute, you probably would have spotted these colourful creations off in the distance, and they are for testing beacon beams. The range of effect is based on the size of the beacon base. This travels infinitely upwards, but only a certain distance downwards. The reason we have a spherical and cylindrical shape over here is because I initially thought that might be how the beacon beam works. It turns out that an Elder Guardian, like a beacon, has a range of 50 blocks to apply its effect to the player. But unlike the beacon, its range is spherical and not cubic and squared, depending on how you want to describe that. And if you want the full rundown on these facts, then go and check out those episodes. And here is a pro tip for when you're in an end city and you're being attacked by shulkers. They, of course, give you the levitation effect, but if you go into water, this will instantly negate it. So even though we still have levitation, the water is simply counteracting that when we interact with it. What is the fastest way to chop down a tree? Well, you need to be continuously chopping the wood, and so other ideas like putting a ladder on the tree and climbing to the top are a little bit redundant. The trick that you just saw right here was me throwing an ender pearl up into the sky before I grow the tree, and then I land on top of it, and that means I can just chop wood all the way down to the bottom, and I believe that is the fastest way to chop down a tree. Now don't tune out just yet, there is a blooper you'll probably want to see at the very end of this video. I just want to say, that is the end of it. So if you've enjoyed it, then leave a like. As always, thank you so much for your support. Be sure to go down to the comments and put hashtag best myths. If you've got one that you think I missed from this list that you'd like to see talked about again, maybe we'll make a part two of this one. Who knows? Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. I know 99% of you watching know this, but there's always people who ask this when I do live streams and whenever I do instant mine in a video. Uh-oh. <laughs>